Concentrate on the job. Don't disturb the doctor. Concerning this day of light and manure, we want to clear that up. Found out some uh, rabbinic customs was part of what we thought was scriptural. Holy Spirit revealed to us that, hey, y'all need to recheck to kind of look at your practice, what you're doing. You know, you want to make sure everything is in line. If we don't use the Talmud or any of those writings for anything else, we cannot mention it for anything concerning this. And, and that was kind of something we read past. But, and basically what I'm talking about is the lighting of the menorah. The scripture we're going to read tonight says that when the temple was uh, uh, restored, they lit the seven uh, candlestick, the candlestick with the seven uh, candles on it. So we have to understand that what slipped into there was some Talmud writings. They said they had enough oil for one day, but it lasted eight days, so that's why you should light the menorah eight days. Well, according to scripture, that can't be found in the records that we teach from. So, y'all, we had to back away from that custom of this feast. That belief. That, that, right, and, and it was just a custom because there's nothing that can be found written. So, even if it was somebody else's belief, it'd have to be found written somewhere. But we don't deal with the Talmud under no circumstances or the Kabbalah. And that's where it kept saying his sources came that it was an uh, eight day all miracle. That's never written in anything that, that's scriptural or as it is written. The lighting of the menorah is the truth. But it wasn't one day for eight days. You light it and then you feast for eight days. That's as simple as it was and that's all we are seeing the rites. But that's how easy you can be reading and studying something. And they slide that in there and you read that too and think that's part of what we need to be doing. Right. But we need to y'all practice make perfect so we want to make sure that we are practicing as perfect as we can. Some things we will be short on y'all. We're in the land of our captivity. But as, as we hit closer to the mark as we can. So we'll hit some scriptures concerning that. We're only going to hit a couple today, just hitting right on the feast and why we're doing it. So y'all, it ain't going to be it's gonna be about a half hour or so, and then we're going to get our feast on y'all, and then we're going to mingle and talk to each other, enjoy each other, get to know one another. Because half of us don't know, you know, I just know, hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Try to get to know some names, introduce yourself to some people and know who you're feasting with. Right. right. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to start off with uh, Psalm 147. Yeah, and uh, the, mir the miracle, yeah, absolutely the miracle yeah. that went down was God delivering his people from a great ca uh, catastrophe. Absolutely. Not the oil was burnt. It was enough oil for one day and it burned for eight days. And that's and what that we're going to see. Yeah. Just like in, in, in uh, the, the Feast of Purim, right. the same exact situation, there was uh, a small number of Israelites about to be wiped out and the Most High delivered them. That's why we celebrate that day, and this right. one is the exact same way. Y'all, but this is what we're talking about, that if we tell somebody not to do what they're going to do on December the 25th and do this, we got to be perfect or working toward perfect on what we need to be doing. Yeah. Because if that question was asked, you know, what, tell me about it. And you throw that towel mud in there and be like, hey, I thought y'all didn't deal with that. <laughs> so y'all want to eliminate that. And also the candlestick was seven. Majority of the candlesticks they sell today are eight. You know, so you have to be careful of the ones you buy because they sell them so that you can do that, that towel mud, a uh, little piece of uh, custom throw in there. So if you have an eight, light the three on the end and the one in the middle, and you'll probably have two open. And that's still, you lighting a seven candle, but if you can, get yourself a seven, you know, and we understand. But, y'all, we just practicing, getting ready for the kingdom. Right. Hopefully, the Most High have mercy on us. We see one another there. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Psalms 147. 
Y'all, we face the east as 1 Kings 8 chapter, also Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. And the Messiah tell us, you know, wherever look toward Jerusalem, uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, we turn toward Jerusalem. We just ain't turning toward the east. It's just Jerusalem is east because we're in the west. If we was in Russia, we turn to the south. So we face Jerusalem because that's where the law coming forth from. Psalms 147, a psalm of David, with the Most High's permission. Praise ye the Most High, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. The Most High do it build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Most High lifted up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Most High with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the heart unto our God, who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Most High taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Most High, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoar frost like ashes. He cattered forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Most High. Hallelujah. Alright, y'all, we got to have, uh, you about to start the lesson out of 1 Maccabees chapter 4. Before we even get there, we're going to read 1 Maccabees 1, though, 11 through 15. I'm going to show y'all a quick round work. <coughs> y'all, we use the Apocrypha. You can steal by King James with the Apocrypha within it. But also, y'all, we usually buy 20 at a time, so we got one more left. If you uh, need one to read along for now, or you want to get it, we normally pay about 11, 12 bucks for them a piece, but we let them go for half price at six. So this last one right here, but if anybody else share along, y'all, let somebody read with you. Because we like to stay together. We need you to understand this so that when somebody asks what did y'all do today, you can explain to them, this is where we got it from. This is where we studied from. Alright, y'all, let's start this out with first night of week one. Yeah, we'll start with one first. One, chapter first night of week one, 11 to 15. A couple quick verses. So we can go ahead and lay this groundwork on what's really going on and what happened. And then we're going to get right to it. First night of week one in the apocalypse. First Maccabees chapter one. First Maccabees Shalom. First Maccabees chapter one.
Y'all, we want to just get the foundation on why we feasting, y'all. And, and understand these things, y'all. We, we, we're trying to do these feast days. You know, there's going to be a few roadblocks here and there. But as long as we're on the right path, we'll get the clear understanding. You know, as we continue to grow the most high, do things like that so that you, we don't never get high-minded and think we know it all. It's a continual growth process similar to what you read in uh, Acts 18 chapter when Apollos was mighty in the word. But Priscilla and Aquila took it aside and said, hey, you handling your business well, but look, want to add this to your game. So what we want to do is ensure that whatever feast days we have, they are correct. Because as correct as we are in telling somebody why they shouldn't be doing what they're doing, we have to be just as correct in understanding what we're doing. Right, okay, no okay. No All right, let's get this, y'all, so we can go ahead and get it in. First Maccabees chapter 1. First Maccabees chapter 1. Verse 11. Verse 11. Here we go. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men. What kind of men? Wicked men. Wicked men. So just because you Israel or Israelite, that don't mean you got a free pass to the king. That's right. Israel has been wicked our whole existence as well. <laughs> All right. Come on, bro. Who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. You'll make a covenant with the heathen, right? You already under covenant with God. That ain't good enough. We about to go be like these heathen. Mm. All right, come on, brother. That are round about us. Come on. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Come on. So this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so far with her end that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. They were so bold and forward. They were like, you know what? Let's go ask the king. And the king gave them permission. Go ahead and do what these heathens are doing. Come on, brother. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem uh -huh. according to the customs of the heathen. This was the beginning of your Olympics. Got men working out uh, for the Greek gods. Come on, bro. And made themselves uncircumcised uh -huh. and forsook the holy cup uh -huh. and joined themselves to the heat right. and were sold to do mischief. They made themselves uncircumcised by doing that, by them going away from the covenant of God. And picking up the covenant of the heathen, they became uncircumcised and they spirit and they worship all that. So then you know circumcision ain't just physical for us men. It ain't just physical. Circumcision is spiritual as well. They said later for the agreement or the contract we underwent to the most high. That's right. We gonna go be heathens. And to this day, men I think they Greeks, they Catholics, they Alphas. That's right. To this day, nothing new under the sun. Jump down to verse 37. Verse 37. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary uh -huh. and defiled. And what? And defiled. Come on. Insomuch that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them. Mm. Whereupon the city was made an habitation of strangers. Like it is to this day. Come on, bro. And became strange to those that were born in her. Mm. And her own children left her. That's what happened to the children of Israel. Thrown about their land, thrown into captivity, forgotten they all. All right, come on, bro. Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Uh, her feasts were turned into mourning. Uh, her Sabbaths into reproach. Uh, her honor into contempt. Come on. As had been her glory, so was her dishonor increased. Mm. And her excellency was turned into mourning. Come on, bro. More of King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. All should be one people. Like they pump it today. New world order. Coexist, we are one people, one way of worship, one religion, one life. That's what it is. Nothing new then. That's right. This went down thousands of years ago. That's right. And it's back around now. To where everybody say, oh, it doesn't matter. We're all one people. Mm -hmm. What was it said? Huh? What was it said? This is in Jerusalem, under the Greeks. That's right. If you go back to the beginning of chapter one and get, you get a rundown from Alexander the Greek and how his uh, kingdom was divided amongst his four apostles. Right? So they Hellenized Jerusalem. Meaning they forced a Greek way of life on our people. To where we forgot we was Israel, didn't care about the law no more, no Sabbath, no feast days. That's right. Like we see today. They forced it on us or they said They forced it on us. All right. A lot of people sold out too. Come on, right. And everyone should leave his law 
So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Mm. Yet yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Yeah, your forefathers went off. Yeah, let's go do that. That looks fun. <laughs> Huh? Let's do what they are doing. Yes, Many sir. of the Israelites sold out. All right? That ain't nothing new. Come on, brother. And sacrifice unto I mm. and profane the Sabbath. Right, because ain't no Sabbaths no more, right? right. Sabbath business. Well, you don't even know what day is the Sabbath. That's right. They tell you it's Sunday. All right, come on, brother. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. What kind of laws the of the strange land? laws of the land. Why are they strange? Because the worship is in direct contradiction to the worship of your God. Right. Yeah, they forcing it right on you. Like, no way, let's all get down like that. We Greeks now. That's right. All right, come on, brother. And forbid burnt offerings uh. and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple. Uh. And that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. So no more feast days of the Most High. You know about Easter. Christmas, uh, uh, Valentine's Day. That's right. All these things we grew up doing, that's all you know about now. Just like what happened when it went, the hit went down thousands of years ago. That's right. All right, come on, brother. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Mm -hmm. Set up altars and groves and chapels of iron mm -hmm. and sacrifice swine's flesh <laughs> and unclean beef. And that's what <laughs> so as soon as they get you off your God, the first thing they feed you is that swine. That's right. They come right behind it with the swine. Here, take the swine. You ain't down with your God. <laughs> You've been lusting to eat it. <laughs> Remember Big Mama bacon back in the day? <laughs> huh? Come on, brother. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised oh. and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. Now, why are they doing this? Right? Get you Next verse going to break it off. Why did they do this? No. Verse 50. <laughs> Verse 49, 49. To the end they might forget the law uh, and change all the orders. That was the whole point of them coming to Hellenize our people. To the end that we will forget the law of God. Without the law of God, we don't have our strength no more and we not protect. Yeah, so then they can conquer us at that point. So then they force their way of life on us. To where they grow with their Greeks today. That's right. Uh, in the Olympics, participate naked, basically. What is a leotard? What is that? Uh, what is the track outfit he's running in? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so they so just like they were performing naked back then, they're doing it now. Ain't that changed? That's right. Where'd right. you right. find out where you said the, uh, the football stadium? The football? Yeah, you say if, you, if you go into the pagan origin of football, okay. Wikipedia, right. Google it, all type of pagan sites out there. <laughs> yeah, you gotta research, but it, you're going right to it. Even, even, even on when they used to chop uh, mothers' heads off and kick their heads around like soccer right. That's right, that's where soccer comes from. Yeah. Kick the head through the time. Hey, this is a criminal right yeah. here. Everybody get a kick on his head <laughs> through the time. Yeah. So y'all have to understand, y'all, we, we got to be careful that we're not entangled into the same type of customs that we condemn every day, y'all. We have to be careful of that and understand because no favorite player may make a touchdown and do this. Is he doing this to the God of Abraham or just to the sports guy? When he throw up number one. Tebow and Right. Tebow. <laughs> so we have to be careful, y'all, that we don't become what's called a fanatic. And that's a fan that's going too far. Bet your rent money on the game. Car no money. On the game. All right, where we going next, y'all? Second Matthew chapter 6. 1 through 11 is going to give some greater detail over that. How they Hellenized Jerusalem. And the effects are major to this day. Men think they're Greeks. That's right. Our people. That's a, that's a thousand year stronghold. Thousand plus year stronghold. Right. And y'all, not only this, but these are the customs that they blended into the mainstream so that you wouldn't be able to detect. But just like I say, if your heart and the intent of your heart is pure, the Most High will show you, he'll, he'll send his spirit to show you and correct where it may be off and it can, you know, the naysayers can gain. Or well, the gain, you know, how it go? Gain the naysayers. Gain naysayers. What well, they'll say, well, y'all doing that wrong like that. So, y'all, the Most High show us as long as we continue to practice his word. Mm -hmm. I give you second Maccabees. Second Maccabees, chapter 6. 
Start at verse 1, brother. Verse 1. Hey, before we go on, is that before the uh, punishment that God put on Israel? It's after. This is after this after the history. Yeah. This is after the Red Sea being split. Right. Him giving us the law. This on down. It's like 100 years before Christ. That's right. Well, it's after that. But you see, same type thing going on. Right? Like, was this done to us due to the punishment? You said, what? Well, was this done right. to Absolutely. Right. 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 going to different. Uh, same thing, just uh, assimilate. Right. You know, the Most High says, uh, uh, you be in a company of strange nations, but not to join in fellowship. And that means pledging allegiance to any society. Ain't nothing wrong with you, you know, an Ishmaelite, and y'all may hang out every night in, but the minute he start to talk or whatever, you know, he should understand clearly uh, who you represent. So if that's cool, you know, we, but we're just talking about coming into fellowship. And now Somebody the asks you to join the bases, you're like, you know, I can't deal with that. Well, you don't know what you're missing. Yes, I do. <laughs> Come on, let's get it. Second Maccabees, six. Second Maccabees chapter 6, verse 1. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their father <laughs> and not to live after the laws of God. In order to take these people down, they got to get us up off our God. That's right. So make them drop the worship of their God first. And it says compel the Jews. Persuade them to That's go against right. their God. That's right. All right? Come on, brother. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem uh -huh. and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympus. So you're going to take the most highest temple, right? One of the seven wonders of the world and say, you know what? This is the temple to the Greek God Jupiter. And they teach us all about their Greek gods in high school. Man. Uh, the Greek mythology. That's right. See that? I took that class. You did not know it that they straight came and polluted the temple of God in Jerusalem by calling it the temple of Jupiter. That's what happened. So it was more than just them calling it. Look at what they about to do up in the temple. All right? Come on, bro. And that in garrison of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, mm -hmm. as they did desire, that dwelt in the place. Mm. The coming in of this mission was sore and grievous to the people. Come on. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles who dallied with heart. You see that? In the temple, <laughs> they have an orgy. What? In the temple of God. Yeah. Dallying with harlots. So you get that up off your God, call the temple of Jupiter. But see, Jupiter in a whole. His uh, worship was to the same moral conduct kind of the Lord owed you to. That's right. You can go have you some orgies and, and all that stuff you lust after serving them, God. Still in Dallas, huh? Still in Dallas. Dally with harlots. In the temple. All right? Come on, brother. And had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. Mm. And besides that, brought in things that were not lost. So you see why we have to rededicate the temple after this point. Look what these heathens and did to the temple of God. That's right. In order for us to dwell up in there, it would have to be re cleansed and rededicated. That thus the feast of the dedication. Yes, right. Talk. Come on, brother. The altar also was filled with profane things, Ooh. which the law forbid. Come on. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, mm. or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So you can even claim your heritage. You ain't no Israelite, you a Gentile. You a Greek. No feast days of the Most High take our pagan days. Huh? Let your morale down. Do whatever you want to. That's right. It was against the law. They so like, look, later for what they're talking about, in order for them to conquer us, they got to get the stronghold of all folks. Right? We protect it and we keep the commandments of our God. That's right. The angel of the Lord that camps around those that fear him. That would say in Psalms 34, verse 6. That's right. Right? So his protection ain't around us, but he tells you who it chose. That's right. And what Satan told him, most high. Yeah, yeah. You got heads around him. Job was a person that feared the most high, hated evil, and kept the commandments of God. So he was protected out of it. So they like, look, later for their laws, it's coming they worship, and in doing that, we forever have rule over. That's right. That's what's happening. To the point now, oh, you're not under the law, silly. That's silly. You have to do that. Right. Huh? And you don't even know how serious it is. It said to the end that they would forget the law. That's right. That way now it's like, you know, we gotta keep the commandments. No, no, no. Uh, we Israelites know we're not, we're Gentiles. Jesus, you see where it kicked off at thousands of years ago. That's right. All right, come on, bro. And in the day of the king's birth every month. Every what? Every month. This heathen had a 
had his birthday every month. <laughs> Say, I'm gonna do my birthday in month <laughs> on the same day. All right, come on, brother. They were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices, and when the feast of Bacchus was kept, uh -huh. the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus, uh -huh. carrying ice. This is the Bacchus, the Bacchus symbol right here, the symbol you thought was a heart. Oh, That's the Bacchus leaf right there. Your heart is like a fist. You don't know this is symbol to a false god right here. What well, holiday they pump this on? <laughs> okay. All right, so anyway, our people was forced to worship this God back in the day. That's right. We're doing it willingly now. Come on, brother. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heat huh. by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashion mm. and be partakers of their sacrifice. Later when they worship, they feast. Y'all better worship how we worship. It's going to be your life. All right, come on, brother. And whosoever would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentile should be put to death. See that? What you don't want to do is one world law, one world religion. We all want people. You don't want to do it. The order will put you to death. That's right. Thousands of years ago, when the law requires was passed, and this time is coming back from earth. So where you and I have to make a choice. All right, come on, brother. Then might a man have seen the present misery. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, whom they had openly led round about the city, mm -hmm. the babies hanging at their breast, they cast them down headlong from the wall. They took the babies oh, that our, our mothers had circumcised. Oh, what you circumcised as a baby? No remorse, no compassion, took the baby, threw them off the temple head first. Whoa. Why would they be doing that? You see that? Get That's us right. about the worship of our God. That's Come right. Come on, brother. And others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly, being discovered to Philip, were all burnt together. Woo. Because they made a conscience to help themselves for the for the honor of most sacred city, so of we, the most sacred day. We have people that was going being put to death because they chose to stand up for what was right. Right? Not what we read earlier where it said wicked men was like, look, let's go make a covenant with the heathen. That's right. We got people, men and women, that was like, look, we're going to do what thus saith the Lord. And it cost them their life. That's right. See that? But they got a great resurrection coming because they, they stood up for those rights. That's right. All right. That's it for that. Let me hit that verse 12. Verse 12. Now I beseech those that read this book. That they be this not that they be not discouraged for these calamities, mm -hmm. but that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for chastening of our nation. Well, they all these punishments wasn't for our destruction. See that chastening get us in line because guess what? They wouldn't be here ruling over you as you've been doing what you're supposed to be. Right. Yeah. They never had the power. Right. Straight conquer us if we just stuck to what the Lord told us to do. Yeah. That's the whole point of the story. We're going to get to the stick of it. First Maccabees 4, 39. This is the brothers that actually stood up because many people sold out, but it was a few righteous men that stood up for the cause. That's right. And the Most High was with them and delivered them. And uh, being that they, the Lord was with them, the Messiah had a temple to walk in. And he was on the earth 150 years later. Had these brothers never stood up and did what they were supposed to do, the Messiah wouldn't have had a clean temple dedicated to the Messiah to walk in. Right. And he was born 150 years later. That's right. John, you finna see the brothers who didn't. First Maccabees oh, 4. Right. Right. Go, go, uh, go to 36. 36 on that. Yeah. First Maccabees 4. These are the brothers that actually stood up and said they weren't going to be wicked. That's right. No matter if it cost them their life, they weren't going to sit up and just, you know, just, just spit in the most high's face like that. First Maccabees chapter 4, verse 36. How we looking, everybody there? Let's get to understand. Then said Judas and his brethren, Behold, our enemies are discomfort. Let us go up to Clean to dedicate the sanctuary. Uh -huh. Upon this, all the hosts assembled themselves together and went up unto Mount Sinai. They like, look, it's pee, blood on the altar, everything's defiled. Look, we got to go rededicate this altar, this sanctuary. We got to clean the sanctuary and rededicate it to God. But these heathens been up here polluting our temple. 
Right? Come on, bro. Verse 38. Yeah. And when they saw the sanctuary desolate uh. and the altar profane, and the gates burned up, uh. and shrubs growing in the courts as in a forest or in one of the mountains, yeah, and the priest chambers pulled down, yeah. they rent their clothes and made great lamentation and cast ashes upon their heads. Come on and fell down flat to the ground upon their faces and blew an alarm with the trumpets and cried toward heaven. Why? Right, because they couldn't believe the temple, like the whole temple sanctuary was in this condition. Right. Couldn't believe it. Come on, bro. Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress uh. until he had cleansed the sanctuary. So he, he, he pointed out some, some warriors and like, look, y'all fight against these heathens until we clean the sanctuary. That's right. Get at them, hold them off until we clean the sanctuary. All right, come on, bro. Verse 42. Yeah. So he chose priests of blameless conversation uh. such as had pleasure in the law. See, they didn't lay the law down and call it a wicked thing. That's right. They had pleasure in it. All right, come on, bro. Who cleanse the sanctuary uh. and bear out the defiled stones into an unclean place. Come on. And when as they consult <laughs> what to do with the altar of burnt offerings, which was profane. It's like they looking at a barbecue grill that right. had all swine on it. That's right. Like, what we do with that? We either can clean it off right. or we can throw it away. That's right. What we going to do? Right. All right, come on, bro. They thought it best to pull it down, uh. lest it should be a reproach to them, because the heathen had defiled it. <laughs> Wherefore, they pulled it down. The altar got to come down. They didn't shed all swine blew it on. Right. Altar got to come down. It's heathen. Right. <laughs> come on, brother. And laid, upon, and laid up the stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. Uh. Then they took whole stones according to the law and built a new altar according to the form uh -huh. and made up the sanctuary and the things that were within the temple and hollowed the courts. They made also new holy vessels and into the temple they brought the candlestick. The what? The candlestick. That's the menorah right here. Candlestick. Come on, bro. And the altar of burnt offerings mm -hmm. and of incense and the table. And upon the altar they burned incense, and the lamps that were upon the candlestick they lighted, mm -hmm. that they might give light in the temple. That was the purpose of lighting the candlestick, right. to get to have light in the temple, so they could see what they was doing while they was dedicated. Come on, bro. Now, hold on, just one second. And this is where most people was looking for us last week to get to the light one candle every day, <laughs> but it wasn't that, because it ain't never been in these scriptures that was slipped in there by that. Uh, the Kabbalah or the Jewish rabbi slipped that doctrine in on us. Never slipped it into the scriptures, but just slipped it into an area of search, resource. I got one too real quick. Um, we look back here at um, verse 46 where it says, And laid up the stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. Okay? We know and we see what's going on and about the temple being defiled. But it was more to, and this is how important it was to them, it was more to just taking this stuff out and throwing it away outside. They had to get this stuff done when they said it had to come from a prophet to tell them what to do with this stuff because it was defiled, because it was swine's blood all over, because it was in the temple. It wasn't just setting it out for the trash and let the trash man take it out. It was for a prophet to say, we got to get rid of this. And it comes from a prophet that said that. That's right. Where we at? Verse what? Verse 51. Let's get it. Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the veils and finished all the works which they had begun to make. Uh -huh. Now on the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, uh -huh. which is called the month of Kaslu or Kislev, uh -huh. in the 148th year, they rose up betimes in the morning Come on. and offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offerings which they had made. Come on. Look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned. Because the very same day, three years earlier, they had came and profaned. That's right. The 25th day of Kislev, which started last night at Sunday. That's right. All right? That's where we end the day. Come on, brother. Even in that was it dedicated with songs, uh -huh and sisters 
and harps and cymbals. Mm -hmm. All right, keep okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, enjoy your speech. Right. Let's get it. Then all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising the God of heaven, mm. who had given them good success. Come on. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days uh -huh. and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. Mm. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields and the gates of the chambers they renewed and hanged doors upon them. Mm -hmm. Thus was there very great gladness among the people for that the reproach of the heathen was put away. Time to kick it, no doubt. Come on, brother. Moreover, Judas and his brother and his brethren with the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days uh -huh. from the five and twentieth day of the month Kislev or Kislev with mirth and gladness. Come on. At that time also they built up the Mount Sinai with high walls and strong towers round about lest the Gentiles should come and trip <coughs> down. They didn't forget that they was at war. That's right. You know, when they was kicking it, they were like, look, let's fortify everything around us. Because <coughs> these heathens ain't with them. Really. Come on, brother. Lest the Gentiles should come and tread it down, mm -hmm. as they had done before. Yep. And they set there a garrison to keep it, mm -hmm. and fortified the shore to preserve it, that the people might have a defense against Idumia. Idumia or Edom, which is another biblical name when you talk Caucasians. That's right. Let you know that the Greeks are Edomites. That's right. That's another doctrine people teach, but you know, it's another story. Last scripture, John chapter 10, showing when the Messiah observed the very same feast. John chapter Showing that the events that went down allowed the Messiah to even walk, to even have a temple to walk in when he was born. 9, 10, and 22. Might be reading one now. Because he got the discourse with the uh, Pharisees and all that at this very same feast. By who he, who he said he was. Who are you saying he was? Now let's, let's understand that what we're doing is a, is a shadow to come. Aaron and his priests were ruling at this time, y'all. This is more symbolic. It's us keeping the custom of the elders, the light and menorah, but under the Melchizedek order, the lamps, the seven lamps in your in your spirit, in your heart, has to be lit with the law of the Most High. And when David said that, that uh, uh, law is like a lamp. You know, and, and the oil that goes in it. When you talk about the, about the ten virgins, do they have oil in their lamp? Yeah. It's all symbolic. Do they have the, the oil to, to light the lamp in your spirit? It keeps the Holy Spirit burning. If you don't, it's going to be some problems. Mm -hmm. So first, understand it internally and, sac and uh, circumcise your heart before you think just light the manure going to get it done. He said the seven lamps of the Spirit. Yeah, when the Most High talk about there's seven spirits around the throne, seven spirits are spirits that He send out into the earth to govern her. Those spirits are within every man as well to do the right thing because also Proverbs speak of seven things that He hate. You know, so y'all understand it first inside and then what we do symbolically because uh, when the Most High comes, we just need to come understand it practice that things are symbolic y'all this if you don't light a menorah you're not an error we won't judge nobody we don't do that down here because all of that is still a uh, tradition of our elders and and if the inside ain't clean it don't matter you like them every day that's revelation 1 that's 12 right. and 13 seven candlesticks uh, which are the seven spirits of god since god and earth revelation 1 12 and 13. all right we in john 10 John chapter 10. Let's get it. John 10. What's verse? 22. About the feast of the dedication. Then you ask somebody this. 
especially those they claim they followed the ascended Christ. What is this feast of dedication he was observing in Jerusalem? That's right. And where can I read about it? Oh, we see, brother, you know, that's you gotta watch what you take in. Right. <laughs> Get all that. Right. Because instead of them saying, you know what, that's good, but I ain't never read about that. That's right. Never knew about that. They say, oh, you know, that you gotta watch the devil know the Bible too. All right. Watch out. No. <laughs> I just wanted to quit my answer. The question I asked. Right. That's it. Are right, you got that, bro? John 10? John chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. Uh -huh. And it was winter. And it was what? It was winter. It was winter time. Come on. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Uh -huh. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long doest thou make us doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Like, give us a straight answer. Right. Like, enough of all the extra you making us work. Right. <laughs> we, get it, we, we get lazy sometimes. Right. We want somebody to give you a straight answer, yeah. chapter and verse. Go do right. some work. Right. 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 Uh, go study and find. Right. Like, tell us plainly, are you the Christ, yea, and nay? All right, come on, bro. Verse 25. Yeah. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. I already told you what it is. You still don't believe. Come on, brother. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Mm. But ye believe not, because you are not of my sheep. Mm. As I said unto you. How you say that to somebody nice? Somebody's mm. offended at that. Right. You don't believe because you're not of my sheep. Right. But did he just say what he just said? <laughs> 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 Come on, brother. Verse 27. Yeah. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, mm. and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Mm. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, mm. and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Come on. I and my Father are one. Oh, now he blaspheming. In the temple, that's what they think. He's blaspheming. Right. That's killing Come on, brother. Verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. See that? They about to kill him. Aside. He just told him the truth. Me and my father won. That's right. He said right. again. Come on, brother. 32. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? Mm. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, mm. but for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. Uh, like we're gonna stone you because you make yourself as God. That's right. Uh -huh. Come on, bro. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said ye are God. Did he say I said? Psalm 82. I said ye are God. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, come on. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 34 again. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. Oh, man. And he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemest. Because I said, I am the Son of God. He, he doing all this at the feast day in the temple. In Jerusalem, and they trying to kill him. All right, Come and on. understand this, like what he's saying, uh, verse thirty-four. Also, and he's breaking it down that he's saying it's written in your law. Y'all saying I ain't fifty years old, so y'all saying I'm saying that the scripture is saying that my father broke the law. Right. Right. You know, you're saying I'm saying you got the script say that. Mm. So mm. let's get it down. Y'all saying that, that, that y'all questioning me. You know, but my father wrote that. Going. All right. Verse 30, what was that, 36, 36? 37. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. I'm going to read that again. <laughs> if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I am him. And you don't want to believe me because you got something personal against me. Believe the work. Right. And what you, tell you don't want to believe because you got your own personal hang up on what I'm saying. Look at the work that's getting done. 
right? The blind are being uh, getting their sight back, the deaf are hearing again, the dead are being raised up. You still doubting if I am who I say I am? Come on, bro. That's how my faith works. Come on, bro. Verse 39. Yeah. Therefore they sought again to take him, uh -huh. but he escaped out of their hand. Had the dip on. Israel will kill you. Right. <laughs> See that? Right. Right. You want to sit up there and argue with these people? They got stones in their hand or shit like this. They got something right in right. front right. right. He just right. sidestepped into it. What'd he say? Right. Out of here. You slide out of here. Right. Israel will kill you. Right. Just because you stepped on their shoe. See that? Christ knew that. He get up out of here. Right. Come on, brother. Verse 40. Yeah. And went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John had first baptized. Mm -hmm. And there he abode. And many restored unto him, resorted unto him, and said, John did no miracle. But all we, all things that John spake of, this man were true. Mm -hmm. And many believed on him there. Many believed on the Christ. That's right. Many. Got the Joseph, you want to read, brother? And what we need was a second witness of, of explaining also, and these brothers going to read from the book of Josephus, the book of the war, uh, based on the lighting of the menorah. Because, like I say, we had always been kind of in our practices that you light one candle a night for eight days till you get them all lit. But that's not found in the record. All of them were lit at the same time and brought light into the candle. Just that, it, that took place for eight days, not one day that's the rabbinical teaching that was slipped in and uh, the spirit showed us that hey y'all need to clean that up a little bit because that can't be proved. Mm. Down here y'all we prove all things and we talk to other camps all the time. We get on conference call and the first thing we, we put out on the table is if whatever you teaching can be proven by the scripture we will stop what we teach it, and we will teach according to thus saith the Lord what you have just showed us. We say hallelujah that. But if what we're teaching, you can't explain certain things in the scripture, will y'all quit teaching what y'all teach? Amen. Silence on the other end. Because fair exchange is no rock. We ain't gonna do it to each other, let alone let somebody just continue. We say, well, if you don't want to do that, at least tell how we teach you so that somebody else can look and say, wait a minute, this is good. We ask them, will y'all do that? Because we tell them what y'all teach. Will y'all tell them how we teach it if you don't want to let go of what you do? Just tell them how we do it and let them make a fair choice. Silence again. <laughs> Boy, they cuss you out and get off the phone. Yeah, they're good at that. Big bro, it's crazy. All right, you got that for you? We in uh, book 12. This is Flavius Josephus. For y'all that don't know, he was an Israelite historian and eyewitness to follow Jerusalem in 70 AD. Eyewitness, and he's some of our people. Book, yeah. book 12. Book 12 is the Antiquity of the Jews, right? Right. Yeah. Antiquity of the Jews. Book 12. What else? Chapter 7. Chapter 7. What verse you starting at? You know, it's at mid-level. It's like 6 at 318. Right. Starting right here. Joseph is writing scripts kind of crazy, so you kind of got to read down through them. Seems like his chapters and verses all running together. But they clear on the same teaching, and, and we won't see once of all miraculously lasted for eight days. Now, if it did, it ain't worth it, so we ain't going to teach nothing that we can't prove. All right, let's get it, bro. Right. When therefore he had carefully purged it and had brought in new vessels, the candlestick, the table of showbread, and the altar of incense, which were made of gold, he hung up the veils at the gates and added doors to them. He also took down the altar of burnt offering and built a new one of stones that he gathered together, and not of such as were hewn with iron tools. So on the, on the five and twentieth day of the month Kislev, Kislev which the Macedonians all call Apollos, Apelles, they lighted the lamps that were on the candlestick and offered incense upon the altar of incense and laid the loaves upon the table of showbread and offered burnt offerings upon the new altar of burnt offering. Mm. 
Now it so fell out that these things were done on the very same day on which their divine worship had fallen off and was reduced to a profane and common use after three years time for so it was that the temple was made desolate by Antiochus and so continued for three years. That's what we read in 1 Maccabees chapter 1 last week. So the same, the, the same day, three years later, they rededicated the temple. From the day when they straight profane. All right, come on, bro. This, this. Uh, he mentioned uh, the Macedonians. Uh, the, uh, the people of Greece, right? Those, 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 those are uh, Philip, like Philip the Macedonian. Right. Right. Then he had a son in Alexander that united all the Greek states. Yeah. Right. So you would say Greece. Right. right, or all the original inhabitants of that land right it's, there. At the time it was called ancient. Uh, yeah, Greece yeah, or Kittim. Right. Kittim is another name for right. Greeks. Yeah. The Macedonians. Right. All right, come on, bro. Well, who we know is the 300. Yeah. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah, good one. Yeah. This desolation happened, happened to the temple in the 145th year on the 25th day of the month of Pellis. Mm. And on the 150th and 3rd Olympi Olympi Olympiad. But it was dedicated anew on the same day, the 25th of the month of Apelles, on the 148th year, and on the 154th Olympiad. And this desolation came to pass according to the prophecy of Daniel, mm, mm. which was given 408 mm. years before. Y'all read Daniel chapter 8. Goes right into it. Come on, bro. For he declared that the Macedonians would dissolve that worship mm -hmm. for some time. And you see also during Olympic, what they took, they took our practice and turned it into earth. Just like every time you see the Olympic, what starts it off? That right. light. Torch. That torch to, to, to their worship. So this is what we had to snatch back. And they did it on the same day to really confuse our people that just watching some of our elders that had changed their ways and went after the strange law. The same thing Hosea chapter 8 11 say. Our law became a strange thing. That's why today when you show somebody that's in the that's in the Bible and in the Bible. Right. 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 Jesus ain't did that. <laughs> he was born in the mansion. Right. So y'all, these are the ways they do to make our law become a strange thing to us that when we're doing these practices, somebody you mentioned it to them, they hey, I'm doing a piece of dedication. They like, what? Who? Dedication to something. They can't what? Huh? So y'all have to understand, y'all, we need to understand why we're doing this. Nah, and this is just after the feast. And let your spirit eat these words so that your belly may enjoy the natural feast that's coming. If you're down here for any other reason, just cause it, you heard that there's some land cold on the smoker last night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let your conscience bear witness of what's going on with you. Yeah, you don't be no we ain't gonna judge. We ain't gonna judge why you're here. We just letting you know we're supposed to. Just like on the Passover, does anybody eat bring damnation upon themselves? We are going to teach sure. y'all. We don't want to do that to each other. If we see anything out of line, we ought to correct one another. Yeah. Ain't no hierarchy down here that, that one man getting no praise or going over like that. Or you got to go through his brother over here or that brother before you can speak. <laughs> before you can speak. Before you can speak. Right. <laughs> we don't want to preach to this boy like that. Right. Don't do him like that. That's their security. I speak for you. I'm like, gave him a hand. Come on, bro. Let's get it. All right. Now Judah celebrated the festival of the restoration of the sacrifices of the temple for eight days uh -huh. and admitted no sort of pleasures thereon, uh -huh. but he feasted them upon very rich and splendid sacrifices, uh -huh. and he honored God uh -huh. and delighted them by hymns and psalms. Uh -huh. Rather, they were so very glad at the revival of their customs when after a long time of intermission, they unexpectedly had regained the freedom of their worship, mm. that they made it a law for their posterity, mm. that they should keep a festival on account of the restoration of the temple of worship for eight days. Mm. And from that time to this, we celebrate this festival and call it lights. Mm. I suppose the reason was because this liberty beyond our hopes appeared to us and 
that from there was the name given to that festival. Mm -hmm. Judas also rebuilt the walls around the city and reared towers of great height against the insurgents of enemies mm -hmm. and set guards therein and also fortified the city best sura that it might serve as a citadel against any distresses that might come from our enemies. Flat out. Flat out. All right, we got this right here in 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, because the temple is within now. It's all spiritual now. So how do you file the temple, the physical building back then? How would you file your temple now? By doing what? They brought in the worship of another god into the physical temple and it defiled it. Yeah, right. How do you define your temple? That's right. We same way. way. Same, same way. way. The worship of another God. That's right. The worship of another God defiles you. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't, don't recognize how they break the commandments. That's right. So when, you get on the, when, you, when you get out there, a lot of people are devoid of that understanding because they look at it from face value. Like, it's harmless if I do this. We know that it doesn't mean that, but we do it because of this. Well, what is your spirit doing? It's like brother said, you're right. following the spirit by messing with God. Yeah. By messing with entertaining other gods. The worship of them other gods. That's how they defiled the temple last time. Christ said, well, go in, you can't defile you. what's coming out. That's right. And he named all lawbreakers. Right. Idolatry was one of them. Worships of another god. To where you bring your people the truth, and they look at you like you're speaking Chinese. Because they didn't entertain the lie so long to become their reality. They can't, they can't accept what you give them. Right. They're defiled. Conscious is defiled. You can't proceed. Everything becomes conditional responses. They don't do any research. They just give you a conditional response. Like, spiritually, it's, it's, it's a spiritual thing. Like, the first commandment is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So people will minimize the situation and say, well, you know, it don't mean that for us. Right. Well, what right. you're doing it for. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and understand this, y'all. The powers that be don't care. If you find out the truth about what they're doing, they know they are running things and they're going to continue to run it. How long y'all been knowing Columbus ain't discovered America? <laughs> Columbus <laughs> found America. What are they still teaching today? Still the same thing. They don't care what you, did, you learn about them. They saying this is the way we do things. If you don't like it, take it from us. <laughs> Y'all put too much <laughs> emphasis on that. That don't mean you put too much on that. You take it into the area. Let's get it. Interpretation. Say Corinthians. Let's get it. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We're talking about the fire of the temple. That's right. In which the Greeks did to our temple thousands of years ago. But the temple is within. You are the temple of God. That's right. So how do you defile the temple? How? Right. Same way they defiled the, the physical law. temple then. And they came and brought the worship of another god in God's temple. That's right. So they, they, then right after that, what they do? They kill the people. Right. right. Spill all swine blood on the altar. Right. right. And, it, and, and it breaks you going down to that first law. Once you break that yeah. first law, all the other ones come breaking yeah. afterwards. Yeah, we read it earlier. We say they did all this to get us up off the law of God. That's right. That's right. So then they look up, okay, they're not serving their God no more. We can take them. We got power in See that? Yeah, let's get this though. Second Corinthians 6. Verse 13. Second Corinthians chapter 6. For the fourth Be not unequally yoked. First Corinthians, second Corinthians 6, y'all. Let's get it though. Verse 13. Second Second. In the box right over there, on the side over there, you see the people in the box. Let's get to understand. Let's get it. All the way down on the other side over there. You see some books over there. Get it. It's in the, like a little white hair in the tray. Verse 13. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children. Be ye also enlarged. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You see that? The Bible says what? Be ye not unequally yoked together with who? Unbelievers. Unbelievers. Come on, bro. 
For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Uh -huh. And what communion hath light with darkness? Come on. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or wh what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? So like Christ and Satan are not best friends? Right. Say them, hey dog, what you doing? <laughs> Finna come through. <laughs> they ain't on one, one accord, they don't agree about nothing at all. They don't work eight hours, they clock out. Yeah, and they go out and grew together. They don't work like so, that. Hey, I don't know what you know. I'm saying, like, little white people get up there and say, Christ is Christ, said, and then for her, we go up there and say, we're going to be alive, and everybody's saying, I'm too flat. Yeah. That's not being unequally yoked yeah. together. With an unbeliever, then the word also the key word is fellowship. Right, right. That means you you're uh, going into what they going into. Right. That don't mean you ain't. I mean, I got masons in my family. That's right. Well, that mean okay, you a mason? I can't talk to you. I mean, I can't talk to you. Don't invite me to come ride the goat. Right, <laughs> right. I ain't gonna show up at your little shrine event or nothing. Like that. Yeah. Right. So that would be me going into fellowship with them. Right. But some people take that and say, well, you know what? You can't talk to nobody in another body. That ain't what they're saying. Fellowship. Right. Right. I got a uh, second witness quickly. In verse, uh, verse John chapter uh, one, verse six, it say, "If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He in the light, we have fellowship one with another." And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. You heard people tell you that I'm not a sinner, silly. <laughs> sinner? You say you deceive yourself, the truth is not in you when you say that. Right. Get in. Another great section in this case of murder. <laughs> If you speak, you find that that is the twelve. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Right. But rather, oh, reprove them. Yeah, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done to them in secret. Flat out, man. Flat out. That's good. Let's get back to the 2 Corinthians 6. What verse? Verse 16. 2 Corinthians. We're going to finish this out, y'all. We're getting our feast on. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16, showing you that the temple was physical then. Order of Aaron is spiritual now. You are the temple. That's right. Make sure your temple's not defiled. All right? Come on, brother. And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? What agreement at the temple of God with idols? We've seen when they came and put, made the temple of God a temple of Jupiter. That's right. Right? That's an idol God. So what agreement does God temple have with idols? And if you the temple, what you doing entertaining false gods? That's right. Or worships of another God once you find out that's false. What are you doing with that? The temple of God is not in agreement with idols, which is the God of another nation. Come on, bro. For ye are the temple of the living God. You are the temple of the living God. Come on. As God have said, uh -huh. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. See, we are the temple of the living God, right? But that's conditional. He will walk with us and be with us, and we will be his people. Yeah. That's conditional, right. right? We have to do something. Come on, brother. Verse 17. Yeah. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate. See, see what he said? I'm your God, but you got to come up from among them. Mm -hmm. Be separate. You ain't supposed to be doing what the world does. That's right. All right, come on, brother. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, mm. and touch not the unclean thing, mm. and I will receive you. Then the Lord will receive you. Be ye separate. Don't touch the unclean thing. Have nothing to do with idolatry. Then I'll receive you. That's right. All right, come on, brother. Verse 18. Yeah. And I will be a father unto you, uh -huh. and ye shall be my sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. All right, come on. Say it, the Lord Almighty. One more, y'all. First Corinthians 3. Show y'all the thing. Go ahead and read. You read it. You're going to flip over. Go ahead and read Let us wash off all this, all that can soil the body of the spirit to reach perfection of holiness in the spirit of our God. So, chapter 6. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, he just read, mark that down. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 
Verse 16, remember, ye are the temple. Remember that. It's on me. It's on you. It's on First Corinthians, First Corinthians 3, verse 16. Let's read that on down. Something for us to understand about the dedication of the altar and the temple. That's right. But the temple is within now. First who's, the, who's the priest administrating in your temple? That's right. Mm -hmm. Who's officiating your temple? Who's the high priest? Women. Mm -hmm. right. Women. Oh, no. <laughs> the ascended high priest. <laughs> <laughs> the boy said, Women. Right. <laughs> First Corinthians. <laughs> Let's get it. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Same thing we just read, right? All right, come on. Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Read it again. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. One more time. If any man defile the temple of God, mm. him shall God destroy. Come on. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Remember, what agreement have the temple of God with Christ? Right. Right. What you doing worshiping a false god? Right. You're defiling your temple. And you holy. The scripture holy said holy. You, you're marked for death at that point. Mm. We take it lightly, like, oh, it's, it's just, it's just uh, silly and simple. You know, it's just for the kids. Yeah. You don't even know. All right, the Lord said he's going to destroy us if we defile in our temple. That's right. Come on, brother. Verse 18. Yeah. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Come on. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. The wisdom of this world, all your knowledge you claim you get, foolishness with the most high. That's right. Mm. All right, come on. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Mm. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Therefore, let no man glorify in men, for all things are yours. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Whether Paul and Apollos and Cephas, or, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. Mm -hmm. And ye are Christ, uh -huh. and Christ is God. Christ is who? Uh -huh. God. All right, y'all, you know what? I said one more, we need one more. <laughs> <laughs> Two more. If, if y'all look at Acts chapter 15, like people are trying to take you and say Christ died for all that, we don't have to do nothing no more. The Gentiles in Acts chapter 15 had to put down their worship. They had to flee idolatry and move and sacrifice to idols. And they had to get away from things strained with blood, right? So if you flee in idolatry, that means no more Christmas. It means no more Easter. I mean, no more that because you defile yourself by spiritually right. bowing down to another God. Right. And what he's saying is also you have to flee those things in your mind right. before you can flee to any other piece of land on planet Earth. If your mind ain't, ain't, ain't flee from Babylon, you just take that same dirt with you to another plot of land. <laughs> so what's new? And you renew in your spirit and you a new creature. If you still keep the same customs, you ain't new. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 3 and 4. Verse 3 and 4. Remember, ye are the temple. What agreement had the temple God with idols? If you defile the temple, the Lord will destroy it. 22. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 3. All about the rededication of the temple and the altar. Let's get it. Then say thou. Thus saith the Lord God, the city sheddeth blood in the midst of it, that her time may come and maketh idols against herself to defile herself. See that? She made idols against herself to defile herself. Idol is another god of another nation. You're dealing with another god, you're defiled. Mm. Wow. Whether it's you saying uh, the other god in name or you're involved in the worship of the other god, the rituals of another god. Right. Right. You're defiled. All right, come on, bro. Thou art become guilty in thy blood uh -huh. that thou hast shed, oh. and hast defiled thyself in thine idols which thou hast made, uh -huh. and thou hast caused thy days to draw near, and are come even unto thy years. 
Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen, uh, and mm -hmm. a mocking to all countries. Why? Because you picked up the worship of another God. So guess what? Your temple's defiled. See that? And that's how they defiled the temple in Jerusalem. They came in, uh, did what they wanted to do in it, then they put the altar of Jupiter on top of the altar of God. Then start killing some, uh, pigs up in there. That's right. Sacrificing swine flesh to the point to where the whole temple was defiled. They had to rededicate. See that? So in spirit of, of that, brothers that stood up and stood for what was right, the Lord delivered them. The miracle was the Lord delivered his people from a great catastrophe. Like he did then, he will continue to do now, but make up, let us be found doing what we're supposed to be doing. That's right. And they have no power on us. That's it, you got to do it. Anybody got any questions before we get ready to feast? Any questions concerning anything, anything that was taught that kind of went over your head a little bit? We need to get that straight. We need to get that clear because right now what you did today, you need to be able to teach that to somebody else. Yeah. Clearly, with understanding, you can't be guessing and saying, well, hold on, man, it was something. I got a note somewhere. I wrote that. You turn up my phone. Right. It was something. Right, so y'all, closing psalm. You got psalm 145. Closing psalm. Again, y'all, dedication to the temple, rededication to the altar. The temple's within. That's right. Christ is the, is the priest within your temple. But he can't dwell within you if you're involved in worship with other gods. And y'all, that means any, what we talk about, there's no addiction, nothing that you're addicted to but the breath of life, bread and water. So if anything else that you feel is a bad habit with your temple, you have to, you have to clean or get control of what's being put in. Yeah. Y'all, we facing the east, 1 Kings 8, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. We just turning toward holy Jerusalem, Mount Zion, where our strength and help come from. Psalms, the 145th chapter, with the Most High's permission, in the name of his only begotten son. Yeah. Psalms 145, Psalm of David. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, mm. and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Mm. Great is the Most High, and greatly to be praised, mm. and his greatness is unsearchable. Mm. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works, and men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Most High is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy, the Most High God is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Mm -hmm. All thy works shall praise thee, O Ahia, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy power, to make known to the sons of men His mighty acts, and the glorious majesty of His kingdom. The, thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Mm -hmm. And thy dominion endured throughout all generations. The Most High Yah upholdeth all that fall and raises up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Most High is nine to all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. That's right, yeah. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. That's right. He also will hear their cry and will save them. That's right. The Most High preserveth all them that love him. That's right. But all the wicked will he destroy. Mm -hmm. right. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Most High. 
and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Hallelujah! I y'all y'all see a lot in there of song. If we got anybody in here that's blessed with uh, the good vocals or whatever, if you want to just do the Lord's Prayer under the consciousness of the Melchizedek order, please do so, y'all. We encourage that. If there's anybody out there just feeling a song, come on and let it loose. Y'all, we want to encourage that as well, y'all. We don't want to stifle no gifts of the Holy Spirit, y'all. And I ain't trying to copy off of no church or nothing because we read constantly that the singers express themselves. The Edomites come and get us under the same uh, course for us to sing sin. So if there's anybody out there want to sing of the righteousness, y'all, it's, it's, it's welcome here. And if anybody ain't, don't feel like it, ain't got no stage fright, come on, let something loose. Uh, rappers out there have wrapped up a good, a good message. Good on it, yeah. Come on.
298. That's the website. This one of the Hebrews, Jeremiah. Jeremiah and Amos, one of the brothers that woke me up to the truth. All praise of the Most High and His only begotten Son for putting them brothers in my life and waking me up. Most High is His only begotten Son, brother. Yes, one sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All praise. All praise. Sir. Yes, sir. All praise. Yes, sir. Right on. Right on. Right on. Get Love you too, brother. Love you too. Shalom, sis. Shalom. Shalom, brother Drake. Shalom, me, bro. All right, bro. Yes, you going to read over that. Okay. Shabbat shalom, Ms. Rab. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. All right. That's what's up. Shabbat shalom, Ms. Rab. Oh, That's what's up, yeah. Oh, yeah. All praises to the Most High and His only begotten oh, Son. And bro, uh, yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm trying to get all y'all in the shop. Yeah. We get Tell them, free. you know, we this is how we do this, man. We go ahead and worship on the straight Sabbath, man. We don't need to worship on the Sunday, man, because that's not even the original God's written down plan. So why would we do that? It's like making mistakes when they know these heathen is out here when they chasing them stakes, but they making mistakes. It's harsh to land them up in the pit. You gave away your birthright in the early beginning of this. So we're about to turn it over, flip it on a new scale. We'll do this thing real, and we do it so well, you already know how we do chilling in the crib why you hunting Yo. in the fields we just getting it how we live oh, 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 you know how we do it you know and when we spit yeah. we spit bombs oh, nigga, every clue to the tell him he's in me and god when he come out it's that fire that start i swing with the words when i cut down your empire that's right, that's right. He's saying all praise. That's right. Sound, all praise. All praise. Sound. All He's praise. saying that these heathens, they sound like they're going down. It sounds like they're going into captivity, man. It sounds like Christ came, came around. It sound like the temple is going to be built. It sound like the Most High Free bring Jerusalem down with it. it sound like all things are going to get to cracking. Sounds like these heathens don't really, really want that action. They yeah. make their inventions, but they ain't talking. They need to make a better, different decision. Think about the Most High and think about that prison that mm. they will be living. It's called Lake of Fire. They don't want to get that hot wire. It's like electricity all pumping through your veins. Kind of like the blood that the Most High gave me when I was brained, when I was thought up, and when I was made. Think about the things that you need to change, rearrange. Think about the thoughts. You got the Bible. Don't take it as a loss. Count it as a gift. Right. Get in that script and get to reading it. Right. Man, get real with it. That's Woo! right. Stop it, you heathens. Mm -hmm. All praises to the Most High and His only begotten Son, He brews. That's what's up. Don't let me have to tell him again that you're speaking the man's the words of the fool, then I'm not your friend. Mm. I'm not even going to play and pretend, because I know all you want is trouble and ending me up in the pen. Ooh. So I put my head on my shoulders and I think straight, because I got the Bible when I went through it. And I said, man, got to believe in something better and wiser and stronger, because you know ain't nothing leading out to nothing. It's just death or hunger. Woo! Right. That's Boy, right. Hey, That's right. He, he say it's death and hunger in this life that we live. He's talking about all that hype that they build and making it all like you can have that crib, like empty cribs, had that big crib. Now you living in all oh, big biz. Oh, now you big biz got a shirt and a tie, but you was just stuck in it down here in the crotch in the ground when it was real grimy. Huh? But now you talking all the shit, now you real high. No, only person is high is the most high. So stop all your lies and heathens with the talking. All that big banging. All that swinging the sword. All that awesome stuff. Israelite. All praise to the Israelite blood in my chest. Yes, right. Yes. Shalom, sis. Shalom. All praises to the most high that's only begotten, sis. Another beautiful feast of dedication, beautiful Sabbath day. Yeah. Hallelujah, stay live. This sounds a lot. You a vodka door? Uh -uh. Full trap, bang. Uh, that's what's up, that's what's up. Shabbat shalom, Hebrews. That's what's up. Dedication, all praise to our Holy Father and His only begotten Son, man. In Mahashiach, get a hop a shot. That's, yeah. what that's right, right, all right. praises. Shalom. Brother Nim Shah. Shalom, Hebrew. Shalom. 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 That's right. All praises to the Most High and His only begotten Son. Another beautiful feast day. That's right. That's right. On a, a high holy Sabbath. That's right. Shalom as well. All praises. Yeah. All praises to the Most High. Yes, sir. Yes.
Yes, sir. Another beautiful feast day. Yes, sir. Right. That's right. That's right. High seven. Children.